Hi, I'm Carrie Viscolonis, founder of Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice located in and around Metro Detroit. I am here to talk to you this week about establishing healthy relationship with food. So many of you, I'm assuming, have a story, a history, some sort of experience with food where perhaps you've started to label food as good or bad. You know, oh, that food is off limits. So, oh, I don't eat that. You know, for a really long time in my life, I told myself I, well, I practiced vegetarianism and I established some restrictive eating habits simply because it was easier for me to eliminate entire food groups than to learn how to be intuitive and to learn moderation. When we start to uncover some of our stories with our food behaviors, usually it's a glimpse into other behaviors, other habits, other belief systems we have about ourself, our worthiness, and it's a way in which that we can transform our relationship with food, but then also our relationship with ourself and how we see ourselves as enough, as valuable, and to establish some of that inner awareness. So super tangibly, I just wanna give you guys five tools so that you can just look at your relationship with food and see where there's room for improvement. So number one, I want you to create a list and I want you to create a list of all the foods you love. And no limits here, all the foods that you genuinely love. And then I want you to go through that list and answer why. Why do you love that food? Is it because it tastes good? Is it because it reminds you of a memory? Is it because you love making the recipe? Why do you love that food? Maybe it's because of the way it makes you feel. Maybe because you know it makes you stronger. Then, third thing, make a list of all the foods that you don't like. All the foods that you're like, eh, I'd rather not eat that. Oh, it doesn't really taste that good, whatever it is. And again, ask yourself why. So point four, ask yourself why you don't like that food. And then, I want you to go back to your list of the foods that you love and back to the list of the foods you don't love and see where diet culture has informed those lists. Do you love broccoli because you've been told you're supposed to love broccoli or do you like actually love broccoli? Same goes for grilled chicken breast or anything else that you've been told culturally perhaps is a good food. And then go through the list of the bad foods. Do you actually not like this food or is it just because you've been told that fried food is bad for you? Because you've been told that dairy or gluten is inflammatory. See then how much of the foods on your good or bad list are informed again by this diet culture mentality, by stories of restrictive eating, by stories of trying to get to a particular outcome like shrinking your body. And then rewrite the list. Rewrite the list purely with just the foods that you love. And look at the foods holistically. What are the foods that make you feel like you're honoring your body? What are the foods that you love because they make you feel good mentally, spiritually, and physically? What are the foods that you're most proud of when you put into your body? Because you know that it tastes good and it feels good and you're doing good for your body. What are the foods that are just fun and it just makes you happy to enjoy and indulge in? That is the list that you want to work from. Because that is the list that intuitively you're connected to. Because now when you go to make food choices, you're not operating from an arbitrary good or bad list, but you're operating from an insightful and self-aware understanding of, I love this food because it makes me feel good. I love this food because it helps my digestion. I love this food because it reminds me of my grandma's house. I love this food because it's how me and my son bond. And in that respect, then there's no bad food. And if you are making a choice that feels 
like it's a bad one, you have a reason why. Well, I'm doing it because, or I, I, I'm, okay, let's like take an example here. Um, I don't know, cake at a wedding, right? Like you're having cake at a wedding because you're at a wedding and you're gonna eat cake. It's in celebration, it's intentional. So often the reason we get stuck in this good, bad, restrictive, I'm just gonna cut off an entire food group is because we're not taking the time to be intentional. We're impulsive, we're reactive, we're just grabbing whatever, we're grabbing you know, the leftovers off our kids' plates, we're just grabbing whatever's in the fridge that's available, anything we can just throw in the microwave. It's convenience, we're rushing, we're not actually tuning into our body and nourishing ourselves with the foods that actually make us feel good. There can be no bad foods when it's an intuitive and intentional choice. The key is to get to that place where it can be intuitive and intentional. And that means catching yourself in the habits of, again, grabbing the leftovers or finishing off your kid's grilled cheese or, oh, this is just what the family likes. This is kid friendly, so I'm just gonna eat the chicken nuggets and, and you know, hot dogs and french fries too. I like to meditate on it. Almost every day I like to tune in and say, okay, what does my body want or need? And which is super frustrating when you have to buy groceries for the whole week. <laughs> but then I give myself a choice every day. Okay, I, I bought groceries for this. Do I wanna eat that tonight? Or do I wanna have that another night? And guess what? I'm the only one practicing this, so no one else in my family gets to decide. <laughs> which is fine. She who is the maker of the food gets to decide what everyone is eating. But giving yourself freedom and flexibility within that. You might have a meal plan and you have you know all the food prepped, but you wake up and you're like, ugh, none of that feels good. Okay, honor it, what feels good. Because the more that we start not listening to our body, that continues to exacerbate this disconnection that we have with our food, with our intuition. So listening every single day, regardless of how many chopped up chicken breasts you have in the fridge for your meal prep, if you don't want that and you want tofu instead or lentils or sweet potatoes, allowing yourself to listen to your body and responding in that moment and trusting that when you go based off the foods that you love because they make you feel good mentally, spiritually, physically, that you will not be led astray. So much of this is learning how to once again trust yourself, trust your body. Because if you've been dieting your whole life, you've been restricting, guaranteed you don't trust your body. You don't listen to your body very well. You punish. You try to make your body smaller, ignore its signals. You've probably been ignoring the hunger signal your whole life. Part of that is tuning back in. I am hungry, I will eat. This is not a sign that there's something wrong with me. Drop any comments, feedback, suggestions that you have your own journey with this, but I hope that the five tips and in reconnecting intuitively can help you in this process.